Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity RPG tutorial series. Now, in the last episode, we uh, sorted out a way for a camera to follow our player around as he's moving. You can see it's following along behind the player here. But we've only got this one little environment that we're using uh, for the player to walk around in, which is kind of boring, and he's walking off to the side and stuff like that. It's not very interesting. So we need to make some more maps for our game. But at the moment, the the current way that's built into Unity. I, I have heard that they're working on new ways uh, of having like a built-in tile editing system, which is what we're going to be using now. Uh, but the current way that's built into Unity is literally just to drag, oh, we've switched back to the scene view here, to drag a block in, place it there, drag something else in, place it there, and line it all up by hand and by eye. And that's not very helpful at all. So what we're going to use is are two programs that are free to download, uh, there'll be links in the description down below. Uh, the programs are called Tiled and Tile to Unity. And Tiled is basically the program that you use to draw your maps in. And Tiled to Unity is a program that converts those files into Unity for you. It's it's all relatively straightforward. Uh, so first we're going to take a look at uh, Tiled. So I have it open here. So once it opens up, you'll have something that looks roughly like this. I'm just going to pull this over to the side. Uh, and what we obviously want to do is create a new map. Uh, we want it to be uh, orthogonal, and that just means basically it'll be squares, rather than isometric being the kind of like uh, almost diamond view or stuff like that, but we want to stick with orthogonal. Uh, tile layer format, that's fine. Render order, I prefer to have it left down so that it goes from the top corner, but you can have a, it's basically like a starting point for where you move your objects around. Uh, so left down will put the thing in the, in the start point in the top corner. Uh, left up we'll put it in the bottom corner up and stuff so whichever kind of way you prefer it doesn't really matter too much uh we'll go with 75 by 75 for the height um uh, height and width uh, and their tile size width and height needs to be 16 because as we know from the tiles when we first used them that they're 16 pixels by 16 pixels wide so we want to stick to that so we're going to hit okay here and we end up with a big blank map and then we need to import the tile set that we've used um for our images. So if we go here and click on new under the tile sets uh, area here, so it's going to be, we'll just call this uh, base tile set and we're going to load up from our uh, download, from our uh, resource pack that we've been using in the series already so far, which is still linked below this video of course. We're going to open up the sheet of all the objects that we want to use again. So we're going to open that up uh, and we have our tile width and tile height set at 16, but we want to set the spacing. I already have this set, but we want to, on yours it might be set to zero by default, but we want to set the spacing to one because as we know um, on that sheet, there's a one little gap between each tile to make it all spread out and make it all um, easy to manage. So we hit okay there and then we get this, we get all the tiles broken out like this and then to draw with anything we just literally just click on one that we want and go over here and just click and drag and we can draw any kind of shape that we want like that we're getting all these little uh, kind of blue boxes is just kind of a little bit of artifacting that actually won't show up in your game if we scroll down see there we go it's disappeared um but it's quite handy so we can just draw like that or if we were to use this tool we can just select one big area like that and then select our paint bucket and go boop and fill them in and switch back to our normal tool and we can I think we can deselect this by control and D no control shift and A there we go that's what I meant to do okay so we've got uh, basically a little kind of green area here. You might as well just fill in the whole map with green ground like that. Um, and there's actually two little green grounds here which are ever so slightly different. It's hard to really tell the difference but they are very slightly different. And to add a little kind of variety into the world, if we select, dr click and drag on the both of them to select them both and then go up to this little dice roll here, what that'll do is it'll randomly uh, place stuff. So we have the paint bucket still selected. If we go back over this and we hit that now what happened is you can see as we're moving now we're no longer able to paint the whole area at once because it's randomly painted one or the other all throughout it and, and probably a better example of that would be if we click 
select a green and a brown one here and we leave it on random and we have it on our paint bucket and hit that see we get these it randomly places stuff all over the place so it's just an easy way to add a, a tiny bit of variety into your game um, but you probably wouldn't want to just have green brown things all over the place but so next thing we're going to do is add a little bit of water I'm going to just do it like this and then around the edges of the water we need to just draw all the little bits here like this Doo -doo -doo. now you can we're going to take a look in a second you can set up special ways so that you can just like draw one big block and it'll automatically fill in so you don't have to go around the edges but then I'm just showing the different ways of uh, managing the maps in this so there we have a nice little bit of water um, in our world for our player to kind of stand out and see if we hold control and scroll up and down we'll be able to zoom in a little bit and see how it looks let me zoom back out here um, but we don't want our player to be able to walk into this water from off the land because that would look kind of weird we want this to represent a deep bit of water so the player won't be able to walk into it so we need to give this uh, bit of water some collision and the way we do that is if we go up here and click on view and then tile collision editor like this it opens it up a little box here that we can basically draw within an area uh, where, where we don't where we want a collision box to be made and then the player won't be able to walk into that area basically so if we just hold control and zoom in on this again we're going to click this box here and then click in the top left corner and just drag it down to the bottom right like that and then this creates a box over this whole area that the player won't be able to walk into um, there's no quick way to do this really or not that I've encountered if maybe there is and I just haven't found it yet but as far as I know the only way to do this is for every object you want to have collision on you need to go and uh, click and drag on each one which which can be a bit of a pain but if you do it once it's done then you don't have to worry about it anymore and you can draw as many lakes in as many different maps as you as you really want to so we're just going to click and drag all of these just around the water like this and now although you can't see it here we now we, we've given all the these water bits collision they will have collision in this uh, map uh, when it's like put into the game um, so we also want to look at like I was just saying uh, ways of making it a bit easier to draw these kind of big chunks like this uh, and that's using a thing called a terrain which is if we click on terrains here to the side that's what this is here so if we go back here to our map there's this little button here which is edit terrain information so we're going to click on that and then in the middle of the water in that square we're going to right click and say add terrain type and we'll call no no we don't want to do water because we've already just drawn one of them so let's just delete him no we're going to do the dirt here on the ground uh, so we're going to add this terrain type and on this we're just going to call this dirt I suppose um, and basically what we need to do again we'll hold c control and zoom in a bit so we can see it a little bit better uh, there we go okay so what we'll do is we have this is our centerpiece so if we click and drag around it, it and to all four corners it'll fill it in and then we'll know that that's a whole piece and what we do is kind of just draw around that central box like this and that way we know that all these pieces will connect up for us uh, and the other thing we need to do is kind of with this one to the side this other box to the side here we need to go around the outside edges of that and that will fill in some other corner bits as it kind of auto generates the tiles and stuff you'll see how it works now in a second so once we have that there we can just close out of that um, and then on our terrains over here we can click on dirt and I'm just going to draw here first and we'll encounter a little bit of a problem to start off with but we'll fix that then so we just if we draw like this we can see our dirt is nice and easily uh, kind of being drawn in into having like round edges and stuff but because we're drawn over the green bits it's kind of erasing them and we're left with these hard square lines so obviously we don't want that so the way we get around that is using the layers 
up here. So if we click on in the layer section, if we click on this, add a tile layer, we we'll just call it tile layer two for now. So basically this is kind of like if you use Photoshop or anything like that, it's just creating an extra layer on top of what we can already see. So now in this layer, we can use our dirt tile set and just draw around like this. And we get a nice little chunk of dirt in the world uh, for our player to walk around on. So there you go. So that's kind of the basics of it. And then similarly, um, now that we know that's all the kind of ground stuff, if we, we're going to make another layer here, and we're going to call this one objects, uh, just so we have something logical to call it. And then we're going to scroll and try and find some trees. There should be some here. There we go. So we're just going to... Um, oh, we want to turn off the random. That was messing me up there a little bit for a second. Uh, we just want to place some trees randomly around the place like this, wherever we kind of feel like they should go. Um, but again, these trees right now won't have any collision on them. So we've used these two different types of trees. So let's quickly go and give them some collision. So this tree, we're not going to want the player to walk into like that. Oh, I didn't mean to close out of it. Uh, but this other type of tree. Um, so this is the top of the tree. And we might want the player to be able to walk behind the top of the tree. So we're going to leave that as it is. But on the bottom of the tree, we're again going to draw our box around the bottom of it like that. And we'll save it that and be grand. Okay, so I'm going to save this map now. Um, I'm going to go File, Save. And um, we're going to save that into our uh, our folder for our game. Uh, I'm just going to create a new folder in our Assets folder. And I'm going to call this Maps. And these won't be, these won't be accessible straight from Unity as they are like this. But they will be... Uh, um, just a handy place to keep them all together. So we'll just call this um, we we'll call this the test area. So we'll save that um, and just just before I move out of tile here, I was saying that once you set up the collision on the objects once you're able to reuse it again and the way you can do that is here there's a button to export the tile set. So when you when you finish adding all your collision to these objects and stuff, you can export this tile set, and then you can use the same tile set again when you load up any new map. Uh, so it's it's pretty handy in that way. Okay. So next thing we're going to do is open up Tile to Unity, and Tile to Unity is literally just a program that will take the files that we just created in Tile here and export them into Unity. So the first thing we need to do when you open up Tile to Unity, I need to have your uh, Unity project open at the same time. If you go to help up here and then import Unity package to project, hit that button. Okay, so this is, this is the first time I've had this happen to me. It normally opens straight up into Unity, but if that doesn't work for you, what you can do is just go to go back into your Unity and go to edit, uh, not sorry, not edit, uh, go to assets and then import package and custom package and then navigate to where you installed um, your tile to unity so for me that is in here and if we scroll down to t tile to unity and in here there'll be a tile to unity dot unity package so you can open that and then that'll decompress here and then we can you get this little kind of option stuff here so we're going to import there like that and that's all going to import away and that'll be working perfectly fine for us so that's basically just all stuff uh, to be set up into D into Unity by default so that it knows how to handle those maps basically. Uh, and then back in Tile to Unity, actually we can just see, if we go back in here, you can see there's now been a folder created here called Tile to Unity and that's, uh, that's what this uh, program is going to use. So we obviously need to load up that map we just created. So we're going to open our, our file here. Let me just navigate to where it is. Uh, we put it in maps and the test area. So this will take a minute to kind of load up the map within the game itself. Uh, so we'll come back in a second once this is finished all processing. Okay, when that's done then we can preview the map that we're exporting. So if we hit preview map, again this might take a second to load, but once it's loaded up like this, we can see we've got our map and we can see 
this kind of red area with lines through it and any of these areas with red and with lines through it they're uh, collision boxes so like I said we drew all those collision bits onto the world and now we're able to see them uh, actually in uh, in action basically so we're going to close out of that and we need to choose where we're exporting to and that's obviously going to be our folder um, that we're using for our game so uh, we need to go to assets and we imported the tile to unity stuff into the project and then we go if you go into the tile to unity folder you need to find the tile to unity .export .text and double click on that so now it knows where to send its files and then we hit this big ass export button and there we go it's finished exporting and if we go back into unity it's just importing that thing that we just added there now and once this is loaded in we should just be able to go to the tile to unity folder um yep yeah, in this folder and now in the prefabs folder it will have created test area which is the world we just created so if we click on that drag it over here and drop it in place You can see it's massive <laughs> um, so we've ended up with this hugely massive world um, which is kind of not what we want we're gonna we can scale it down we know that our, our pixels are 1 16th or our 16 sorry uh, for every one uh, meter in the world so we're going to set this to 1 divided by 16 which is 0 0.06 Two five, and a y by 0 0.0625 so obviously this is kind of annoying if you had to do this every single time so we're just demonstrating that it works here now and uh, we're just gonna pop that into place here and uh, we're gonna just hide the ground that we already created we're just gonna hide it like that and now at least now when, once we hit play we'll see that our player is navigating around in this little world and um, but at the moment he doesn't go behind these trees here like we were talking about potentially and also he's able to walk through everything because we haven't set up the collision to work properly in the game yet so obviously um, when we import these maps into the game we don't want to have to uh, scale them down every single time uh, and we want to be able to set it up by default so the player can appear behind certain elements like the trees so what we could do is the object layer we know that's what has the trees in it if we go into the mesh in that uh, it is the mesh isn't it yeah and change the order in layer here like we like we changed for the background and stuff make sure it's behind the player we can make sure that uh, so this is set to certain layer player so we could set the objects uh, mesh we could set this to be on the same player certain layer and put the ordering layer as just one so that means it'll appear in front of the player so if we walk around here like this now the player is able to walk behind trees and stuff so that that's good that's what we want but we'd like to be able to set that up so that when it came out of um uh tiled it was automatically uh done like this because again we don't want to have to go and do this every single time we bring a uh, um a map into unity and there is some built-in things in tile that make this very handy and easy to use or in tile to unity specifically so next time in the next episode we're going to take a look at using those import settings um to be able to make a little bit of difference uh, to be able to make things a little bit easier for when we're doing a whole load of maps and trying to make our game uh, as complete as possible and also when you want to be updating your maps constantly you don't want to have to be uh, reset and settings every single time you you bring that into your game so that's going to be it for this episode thanks for watching and i'll see you all for more map goodness thanks for checking out this episode and if you want even more games plus james goodness make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons you can also find me on twitter and facebook by following the links on screen where you can find out all the latest news about the channel and if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.